G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video we're going to talk about hydraulic efficiency, specifically the components that make up the efficiency of a hydraulic pack and the impact of a base oil viscosity index or finished lubricant viscosity inde index on hydraulic efficiency. So most of the time when we talk about any efficiency term we've represented it um, by this uh, Greek letter eta, right? And in hydraulic packs, um, first of all, we have to consider the mechanical efficiency of the pump. And that pump is probably going to be driven by an electric motor. So there's some um, inefficiencies there. Then we've also got the um, losses um, due to the actuators, right, in the hydraulic pack. And then we have um, how much does the, the pressure translate through the system, as well as how much does the volume translate through the system. And there are other sources of inefficiency as well. Um, so you could kind of keep iterating on this. But one of the dominant terms when it comes to hydraulic efficiency is actually the mechanical efficiency or the overall efficiency of the pump. So let's look at that um, in a little bit more detail. And let's put viscosity of oil on the bottom um, on the X axis, right? And let's look at different contributions of volumetric and mechanical efficiency. So volumetric efficiency is um, generally related to the compressibility of the fluid. And I think it should be relatively intuitive that as viscosity increases, right, the compressibility of the fluid gets lower. Um, so something that's really thick, if you're pushing on it, then that motion is going to translate more readily than something which is very thin. So the contribution to pump efficiency goes up not in a linear way. Now, the mechanical efficiency of the hydraulic pump is generally related negatively to the viscosity. Now, why could that be? So mechanical efficiency of a pump, and I want, to, I want you to imagine a geared pump because it's just the most simple compared to, let's say, a vein pump. But most of the losses are going to be friction losses. And when you get up to operating speeds and operating temperatures, the friction is not between the metallic surfaces because they should be separated by the hydraulic oil. So it's actually the internal friction of the hydraulic oil which is dominating the mechanical efficiency term. And so as the viscosity increases, um, you know, the, the pump is having to work harder to overcome that uh, fluid friction. So if you multiply these two efficiencies together, you get the overall, uh, you get a pretty good estimation for the overall pump efficiency which looks something like this. And something that you'll notice is that because in um, various ways it's dominated by, at the low end, by volumetric, and at the high end, by mechanical, you get this peak in the middle, which represents a kind of a maximum efficiency envelope. Now, it's not really helpful for us to think about um, an operating envelope in terms of viscosity, but it is helpful to think about an operating envelope in terms of temperature. And of course, temperature and viscosity are related. So let's change the x-axis to temperature, but keeping in mind that temperature will increase as we go to the left, right? Because it's inversely proportional uh, to viscosity. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that how, how can we increase that envelope of maximum efficiency? When it comes to the relationship between viscosity and temperature, we measure that with the viscosity index. So as the viscosity index goes higher, right, that's flattening out the relationship between viscosity and temperature. So if we have a high VI hydraulic oil, what that does is it expands the window of maximum efficiency. And this is how hydraulic oils with high viscosity indexes um, give you higher hydraulic efficiency, right? There is actually a, a second way that they contribute, which is um, at the very low end. So if you look at very low temperatures, generally, we're considering the startup condition, right? Because our, our equipment is cold. So at the startup condition, we have reasonably low efficiency overall because we have low mechanical efficiency. Remember, it's, it's having to work against the, uh, the fluid friction. But by having a higher VI um, oil, it will generally be um, you know, thinner at, at, at low temperatures, which is desirable. And therefore, the mechanical efficiency is higher at low temperatures, right? And so that gives us what looks like a pretty marginal increase, 
but in percentage terms can be quite big. And so that's the second way in which high VI hydraulic oils contribute to um, hydraulic efficiency. That reflects in um, the formulation dimension. So in the video about selecting hydraulic oils, we talked about thinking of hydraulic oils as being zinc and zinc free, as well as low and high VI. And so this VI dimension is what gives you your hydraulic efficiency. All right, now let's think about where we get that hydraulic efficiency from because um, there are kind of ways to cheat VI. So if you remember from our, our VI video, we said, you know, you could start with, let's say, a, a cheap mineral base oil and get yourself in engine oil terms, uh, a sort of a 10W. But if you wanted to go from a mineral to a synthetic, that will get you a higher VI, right? And so that might look something more like a 10W40. And then if you needed even higher VI than that, then you could put in some additives, right? You can put in some VI improvers, which will get you up to that 10W60, right? So that would be a, a, a synthetic base oil with VI improver. But one thing we know about VI improvers, well, we know two things. The first is that VI improvers um, tend to shear down over time. Now that can be impacted by the quality of, of the specific VI additive, but over time they will tend to shear down, right? So over time, um, if you have a low stability, uh, shear stability hydraulic oil, uh, that 10W60, when you remove the VI contribution, it will start to look a lot more like a 10W40, or if you had a mineral base oil which was boosted by a huge amount of VI improver, it will start to look like a 10W. So that's why shear stability is so important to the uh, long-term performance of hydraulic oils. So make sure when you're selecting a hydraulic oil that if you, if you desire high VI properties, you're looking for something which is very shear stable. And ultimately what that means is you need something with a very high quality base oil to begin with, right? So very minimal VI improvers. The other reason why having minimal VI improvers is good is because VI improvers can also contribute to deposits as they break down, right? And so um, uh, deposit performance can be extremely important for hydraulic packs because if you've got you know close tolerance servo valves or something like that, you don't want any kind of sludge, varnish or deposits um, in your system. So I hope that's been um, a helpful discussion on hydraulic efficiency and viscosity index and how base oil and additive viscosity index contributes to that. Um, as usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.